Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this week we have a bunch of different updates from third-party apps. There were a ton of updates this week, so I thought we'd go over them, as many have asked for this to be a weekly video. So this is your weekly app updates video for the week of April 8th, 2024, through April 12th. Now this week, Apple actually announced new games coming soon to Apple Arcade in an email they sent out in a sneak peek into games coming in May. So you can see them here, it says sneak peek, what's coming in May, wind down with brand new games and explore major updates to fan favorites. With Summer Pop Plus, we have Dicey Dungeons Plus, we have Bloons TD6 Plus, and all of those are being updated or coming a little bit later. So it's nice that they sent this out, they didn't announce it in their newsroom though. If you use Spotify, this is getting an update and it's sort of rolling out to different people depending on what version you're using. They're working on what's called an AI playlist library. So in your library, they had AI DJ for a while, but now they have AI playlists if you're actually in the beta test. So if you're testing this out, this will be rolling out to everyone later on, but you can see that in your library and then you press the plus button and then alongside existing playlists and blend options, you'll now see those options here as well. Also to go along with music, YouTube music is getting some updates as well. If you subscribe to someone, you may start seeing an activity notification feed that's based on your music subscriptions. This is showing up for some people and is similar to what we have on YouTube with the little bell icon, letting you know of different updates or updated music or information from your favorite artist. Also going along with Google's updates, Google's AI photo editing called Magic Editor is coming to iPhone next month in Google Photos. They actually posted about this on their website where you can see that it's going to have magic editor with photo unblur magic eraser and more according to this where it says enhanced editing features are coming to all google photos users so you don't need a subscription and it says make complex edits with magic editor so some of these things are really nice where you can maybe move things around if you want them all in the frame move people around and other options as well so those are things we'll see in the near future also, Google launched their own Find My Network this week, and iOS 17.5 code actually mentions some of this, or sort of references that you can track those devices, and if they're nearby, you can actually block them. So similar to what you can do with AirTags, now with the new Find My Network on Android, you can sort of block those third-party devices if they're found nearby. So you'll see you can locate offline devices, keep track of everyday items, very similar to what Apple had, but now it's on Android as well. So it's sort of a standardized thing where if there's something nearby, devices will let you know. So that's coming in iOS 17.5 as well. Also, if you use Google One and you use the VPN, they're actually shutting that down. So if you use the Google One service, I don't know if I have it installed on this device, but Google One is a really nice service that allows you to have some extra storage. And sometimes you could use the VPN with it if you wanted to, but apparently not enough people were using it, so they're shutting it down. However, if you subscribe to Google Fi as your carrier, they're going to keep that around with VPN functionality, but it won't be built into the device itself. And speaking of VPNs, DuckDuckGo has a new subscription service with a VPN, personal information removal, and identity theft restoration, which they're calling Privacy Pro. It's $9.99 per month or $100 per year or so, and you'll see the different features here. So if you're using their browser, you can now be protected with that all built in if you want to use that. So that's something that some people may value. Other people may not have that or may be using different services altogether. One of my favorite apps for benchmarking different devices was recently updated. That's Geekbench and they finally updated it. It opens quickly now if you've been using it. Typically you'll press on it and then it will take a moment to open the first time. That seems to be fixed. And it also now supports ARM scalable matrix extension instructions. So that's a new option it can do as far as checking speed and everything else. So that's updated now. Make sure you update if you use that regularly. Also, Arc Search was updated again. They continue to update this app with new features and changes, and one of the things they've updated is the settings pane. So if we go down here, you'll see if we go in, we go to settings, it's been updated with better readability overall, global site settings changes, and it just makes it look a little cleaner. 
Also, if you take a screenshot of the browse for me page, so if we go in here, take a screenshot, it will now pop up this little option that says share the results or copy the link. So little changes here and there that just make the app nicer and nicer to use. A social media app that seems to have a smaller following is Blue Sky, and it's finally gotten some updates that allow for hashtags in your profile bios, and you can also now long press links in posts to get share options. So if we want to long press here, we can get some share options or we get our share sheet and can share that with other people. So it's slowly getting updated and you'll see it here where I'm on here. I don't regularly post here as I'm busy on other ones, such as Meta's apps with threads and other things. We'll talk about that in a moment. But speaking of Meta apps, Facebook Messenger actually recently got an update. If we go in here to the browser, you'll see that it now allows for HD photos. It has shared albums and also allows for more storage if you want to share a file. So you can send high definition photos, You'll see here, we can send up to a hundred megabyte files as well. So if you need to send something that's larger, it will allow you to do that. Also, if you use Instagram, Meta is now blurring explicit photos for teens in Instagram. This is according to the Wall Street Journal, where they said Instagram users who receive images via direct messages will see pop-ups explaining how to block the sender or report the chat and a note encouraging the recipient not to feel pressure to respond. People who attempt to send those photos via direct messages will be advised to be cautious and receive a reminder that they can unsend a pic. So that's something that's been updated. And also, if you're planning to use threads regularly and maybe develop a third party app to use it, there's now information on how you can do that with different APIs. So this is something that's launching in June. If you use threads, that will allow third party applications and just gives more information about it overall. Twitter this past week actually released passkey support on iOS. So if you're using Twitter or X, you can now use passkey on iOS to log in instead of having to log in with two factor authentication, using a code, maybe through messages or email, you can now do it through passkey. So that's always a nice little update. And as far as an application on the Mac that's been updated, Pixelmator Pro got an update this week that allows for PDF text editing. It's actually a pretty major update that supports text layers in PDFs, also has text editing in Apple PDFs, has text strokes, and bento grid templates similar to what you see in the thumbnail of this video. So all of those things have been updated. This is actually a long time coming for PDFs, and I'm glad they finally added support so you can edit those text layers. So it's pretty great, something I use all the time. And so those are all the major app updates this week. I expect maybe some more updates from Apple in the coming weeks. However, as we get closer to the launch of iOS 18, they'll probably redo some of their apps to sort of closely match that. It's been a little sparse with apps on Apple Vision Pro, and we haven't seen a whole lot from Apple there just yet, maybe a little bit later as well. Now, if there's any other apps or things you'd like me to cover on a weekly basis, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, and I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe, and if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.